So friends, we are now hearing from someone who was inside the grand jury room down in Georgia. The grand jury that investigated the election crimes of Donald Trump. And based on what we're hearing, it's pretty clear. Indictments are coming. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, we now know something about the Georgia State Grand Jury into the election crimes of Donald Trump, and we learned those things from none other than the foreperson of the grand jury, the forewoman who was inside the grand jury room during the investigation. But before I turn to that, can you indulge me 30 seconds of housekeeping? As you may know, here at Justice Matters, we're an all-volunteer operation. We're up and running seven days a week, posting a legal analysis video each and every day, and we couldn't do it without your support. So if you would like to more formally support our efforts, our mission, our content, please feel free to come on over to patreon.com. You can sign up to become a patron, and if you do, I'll send you some Team Justice and Justice Matters stickers and a personal handwritten note of thanks. And let me tell you, friends, when these indictments start dropping, we will be here doing double duty on the justice front. Now, let's turn to the new reporting. We're first gonna look at an article that ran in the LA Times, and then we're gonna move to the New York Times. But let's start with the, with the LA Times. And let me tell you, friends, the headline of this article, I think sort of undersells the seriousness of some of the information that is disclosed in this article. Here's the headline. A funny Giuliani, a geeky Raffensperger, and subpoenas galore inside the Trump grand jury in Georgia. And that article begins, they were led down a staircase into a garage beneath a downtown Atlanta courthouse where officers with big guns were waiting. From there, they were ushered into vans with heavily tinted windows and driven to their cars under police escort. For Emily Coors, that is the forewoman of the grand jury, for Emily Coors, these were the moments last May when she realized she wasn't participating in just any grand jury. Here's what she's quoted as saying, quote, that was the first indication that this was a big freaking deal, Coors told the Associated Press. The 30-year-old Fulton County, Georgia resident who was between jobs suddenly found herself at the center of one of the nation's most significant legal proceedings. She would become foreperson of the special grand jury selected to investigate whether then-President Trump and his Republican associates illegally meddled in Georgia's 2020 presidential election. Now, friends, let me state the obvious. It's pretty unusual to hear from somebody who sat on the grand jury, the foreperson, no less, about what went on in that secret proceeding, what went on behind those closed grand jury room doors. But the article makes clear that what Ms. Coors was doing wasn't improper in any way, sitting and giving this interview, because the article notes the following. The AP identified Coors after her name was included on subpoenas obtained through open record requests, and Fulton County Superior Court Judge Robert McBurney advised Coors and other jurors on what they could and could not share publicly, including in interviews with the news media. During a lengthy recent interview, Coors complied with the judge's instructions not to discuss details related to the jury's deliberations. She also declined to talk about unpublished portions of the panel's final report. So it sounds like she was given the authority, given permission by the court to sit for an interview and she had to follow some parameters that were set by Judge McBurney, which according to the author of this article, she did. But here's a little bit of what she did disclose when she gave this interview. 
She said that she enjoyed learning about the inner workings of the White House from Cassidy Hutchinson, who Coors said was much more forthcoming than her old boss, former White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows. Friends, that's what I would call foreshadowing. If you'll recall, when the Georgia Special Grand Jury Report was released last week in highly redacted form, so we don't know who they recommended should be indicted, we did see a passage in that report saying that the grand jurors believed one or more witnesses lied to them and urging District Attorney Fawny Willis to prosecute people for those lies. Well, now based on what Ms. Coors said in this interview, it sure sounds like Mark Meadows might be one of those people that lied to the grand jury and that the grand jurors think should be indicted because they said, you know what? He wasn't all that forthcoming. Cassidy Hutchinson, who worked for him, was much more forthcoming. We'll stay tuned to see if Mark Meadows is one of the marquee names on the indictment that's handed down by the Georgia regular grand jury. Here's something else that Ms. Coors said when she sat for this interview. Rudy Giuliani was funny and invoked privilege to avoid answering many questions. Now, we don't know if he invoked his Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination or maybe attorney-client privilege. I suspect we'll hear more about that soon. And then one other thing that she said that I wanted to touch on. She said at least one person who resisted answering questions in the grand jury became much more cooperative when prosecutors offered him immunity in front of the jurors, Coors said. Other witnesses came in with immunity deals already in place. So it's interesting. District Attorney Fawny Willis, the Fulton County District Attorney, who was heading up this criminal investigation of Donald Trump and his associates, um, decided to grant some witnesses immunity. It's pretty clear based on what Ms. Coors said that some of the witnesses came in and they had already been granted immunity. That to me says that District Attorney Willis realized some of these witnesses did some wrong, committed some crimes, and have a privilege against self-incrimination such that they could plead the fifth and avoid testifying, but Ms. D.A. Willis and her team decided that some of these witnesses should be granted immunity so they could be compelled to testify, forced to testify, because immunity extinguishes, does away with your Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, because your truthful testimony can't incriminate you if you've been given immunity. So it'll be really interesting to see who District Attorney Willis decided to grant immunity to and compel their testimony. You usually grant immunity to a lower level criminal fish because that person has information, incriminating information about a higher level, a bigger criminal fish. So we will probably know soon enough who got immunity and who didn't. And then the other interesting tidbit in that passage was there were apparently people, or at least one witness, who was offered immunity in the grand jury. Spur of the moment, you know, drop of the hat immunity, or what we call pocket immunity, which is actually a thing. Sometimes we get Im immunity in advance, but we don't deliver it to the witness. And we wait to see if the witness will invoke their Fifth Amendment privilege, because if they don't, if they decide to waive it and testify, then we don't need to deliver them the immunity and we're gonna talk more about why delivering somebody immunity makes that person a less attractive witness for the prosecution in the future because they can be cross-examined with the benefit they got when that immunity was delivered to them because it's the prosecutor saying, we're not gonna prosecute you for your crimes. As you can imagine, that inspires lots of cross-examination of that witness about whether you're lying and saying anything the prosecutors want you to say because they promised not to prosecute you. So sometimes we get pocket immunity. We figuratively keep it in our back pocket. We wait to see if the witness will, will plead the fifth, will invoke their Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. And if they do, and we decide 
we really want the information the witness has more than we want to prosecute that witness, we will deliver them the immunity that extinguishes their Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination and they must testify. So I found it really interesting that that went on, it looks like at least once in the Georgia State Special Grand Jury. Now, let's turn to the New York Times reporting about the interview that Miss Coors, the forewoman of the grand jury, gave because the New York Times shares a little bit more information about some of what Miss Coors said. Here's the headline. Jury in Georgia Trump inquiry recommended multiple indictments, forewoman says. And that article begins, a special grand jury that investigated election interference by former President Donald Trump and his allies in Georgia, recommended indictments of multiple people on a range of charges in its report, most of which remain sealed, the forewoman of the jury said in an interview. And then Ms. Coors went on to say, quote, it's not a short list of people the grand jury recommended should be indicted. Asked whether the jurors had recommended indicting Mr. Trump, Ms. Coors gave a cryptic answer, quote, you're not going to be shocked. It's not rocket science, adding, you won't be too surprised. Friends, I for one am thrilled to hear that we will not be too surprised regarding who the grand jury recommended should be indicted because after we heard the phone call Donald Trump placed to Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, look, just find me 11,780 votes and corruptly declare me the winner of the Georgia state election. After we heard that, we would sure be surprised. We would be shocked. We would be floored if Donald Trump wasn't indicted, if this grand jury didn't recommend that Donald Trump be indicted for his Georgia state election crime. So I am thrilled that the forewoman of the grand jury that heard the evidence of Donald Trump's election crime said, you're not gonna be surprised. It's not rocket science. And she went on to say, yeah, we focused on that phone call between Trump and Brad Raffensperger. And the fact that we're not going to be surprised is really good news because justice matters. Friends, we are getting there. Please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again soon.